Hello everyone, welcome to my video on the top 5 cards you're sleeping on. These perhaps aren't the most powerful cards of the expansion, but they may be the most underrated. First up we have Chillblade Champion in Paladin. Uh, why do I think this card is stronger than it looks? Well, yeah, first of all it has synergy with Happy Ghoul, which it costs 0 mana if your hero has been healed this turn, so you can potentially use the uh, Chillblade Champion to uh, kill a minion or value trade with it, and then play a Happy Ghoul on the same turn for a very big uh, tempo swing. Against aggro, they have to deal with this card. So if you use it to um, value trade into like a 1-2 Firefly, for example, and they still have to kill off the 3-1 body. Uh, in doing so, you're going to heal up for at least 6 damage. It's also very powerful with buff cards. If you stick a Blessing of Kings on this thing, it's going to be able to remove one of your opponent's minions or go face, and it's going to heal you for 7. And then they're going to have to deal with it afterwards, and it's going to heal you for potentially even more. It also has some potential with hand buff mechanics, so uh, watch out for it there as well. Next we have Fate Spinner, which is a 5 mana 5-3. Uh, many people might think this is just a uh, Druid Abomination, but I think it's a lot stronger than that. First of all, 3 AoE is a lot better than 2. Uh, when you play Abomination, an opponent would often trade off their uh, 2 health or lower creatures into it, and then let everything else survive. It's a lot harder to do that against a 3 damage AoE. Secondly, your opponent is incentivized to kill this off before uh, playing any of those their creatures, so it kind of has a soft taunt in that regard anyway. Druid doesn't really have access to very good AoEs and this is potentially a very uh, good one in the mid game. Finally you can play this when you're ahead. When you play Abomination and you're ahead it's going to hurt your board more than help it. Uh, but with Fate Spinner you can just choose the buff option and potentially snowball your board even more. Next we have Runeforge Haunter. It's a 4 mana 5 free. On your turn your weapon doesn't lose durability. Uh, this card's kind of similar to Blood Sail Cultist and Captain Greenskin, both of which are very, very powerful in um, Pirate Warrior. This card's really nicely from their 3 mana weapon. When you play this minion, you usually get immediate value from your weapon that you have. You can either push face damage or use it to remove a minion with no cost to yourself. And then your opponent has to kill off your Runeforge Haunter afterwards, otherwise that your board's just going to get out of control and you're just going to use your weapon to keep clearing things. Next we have Stitch Tracker and Hunter, which is a 3 mana 2-2. Uh, Battle Cry, discover a copy of a minion from your deck. Uh, this is going to be very powerful in aggressive hunter decks, I think. You can kind of vomit your hand onto the board and try and push really hard for tempo, and then use this card as a sort of reload mechanic. This is kind of similar to Stonehill Defender, but you have a bit more choice in what you get to discover because it's related to how you build your deck. Uh, this, card, this card also allows you to make your deck a lot lower curve. Reason being, you're less likely to run out of steam with this card, and you're more likely to find uh, your higher cost minions because you can fetch them with this card itself. By number one we have Halfiend from Warlock. Um, a lot of people are saying this card's completely unplayable. I actually think it's very strong in Zoo Warlock. Uh, first of all the stats are really strong. It's very good for trading on turn 3. The 3-6 stats allows it to trade really nicely into uh, 1 and 2 drops. Playing at a Zoo deck so often you're going to be ahead on board so it's kind of hard for your opponent to uh, sort of send all their minions into this 3-6 minion. Generally when you're playing Zoo, uh, your hand's going to be kind of close to empty anyway, so it's not like you're going to be able to discard a lot of things with this card. If your opponent is uh, willing to send all their minions into your 3-6, well your 3-6 just got a lot of value out of itself, so actually discarding your hand isn't too much of a problem. If you do have no cards in hand, Zoo is generally quite good at top decking, you're going to be able to find most things playable that you top deck. This gives you a reasonable amount of control on what you discard. When you have this on the board and you have a hand, you can play out the things that you don't want to discard and then attack with this and discard things like Silverware Golem or Clutch Mother and uh, really sort of boost your strategy. This is also a really strong top deck when you are playing Zoo. If you're tapping, like say on turn 5, and then you draw this, it fits really well into your curve, having a 3-6. Three, uh, three, you can have a, sometimes have a problem as Zoo if you're tapping too often then you have cards you can't play or they're too weak like a one drop or a two drop and this is a really big sort of amount of stats for you to top deck all right there are my top five sleeper hits for knights of the frozen throne uh, we'll see you after the expansion hits whether i was right or if i was mistaken but until then i'll see you next time